Hi everyone, it's Desiree. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me for another video. Today, I'm gonna go over how to make these envelopes for the 100 envelope challenge. I have them in this box, which I actually got from Walmart. I wanna say it was like less than $4 for this box. And these boxes are really good. I really like them. They have some larger ones too, but this is the um, medium size one, I believe. It was the second largest one that they had there. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how I made these. I'm actually gonna show how to make three different versions of these because these are very time consuming. These, um, they are laminated with vellum. I just wanted them to look pretty uh, as, well, as well as functional for this challenge. Uh, I did put some numbers on them, which is something you don't have to do if you don't have as much time to spend on making these. But yeah, I'm gonna show three different ways to make these. Uh, one way is like, I feel the most affordable and easiest way to make it. Uh, and it, kind of three different levels of making these. This is definitely the hardest, most time consuming way, um, but definitely well worth the time, in my opinion, for myself to make them because I really like how they came out. So I'm gonna go over the three different ways that you can make the envelopes to fit in this box, again, that I got at Walmart. I believe you can find these on Amazon though. They So if I can find them on Amazon, I will link them. But this one is called, here's the tag, Pen and Gear. And I found this at the, um, in the section where they have, um, near where the pens are in the paper um, and all that kind of stuff in the stationary section. So yeah, I'm gonna go over that. So one, one of the things that you'll need is a paper trimmer. So I have this Fiskars paper trimmer. Uh, so paper, I'm gonna show how to make also this one right here that's just cardstock. This was way easier than the um, than these. And then I'm gonna show a different way without a laminator because not everybody has a laminator. And if you don't want to invest in one, then you can still make these and not have to, you know, get a laminator and all the sheets and all that kind of stuff. Because it does get a little pricey at the beginning. All right, but I do suggest getting some cardstock. I really like this cardstock, which I got at, I think, oh yeah, Recollections, which is from Michaels. I really like this one because it's only one-sided. Uh, which sometimes they can be two-sided, but I like the one-sided for this. So that way the inside is white. It comes with six, um, actually 48 sheets. So 16 different designs, three sheets of each of the designs. And it's like a cohesive pack of paper that you can use for this challenge because you're going you're gonna to need quite a bit of the paper um, for this. So these are great packs. I think they were $20. No, sorry. They were $9.99, I think, for this pack. So definitely check it out. Joanne has some options, too, that are really cheap. And if you use a coupon, um, very affordable. All right. So I'm going to go over first, like, the cheapest way to make these boxes. And I'm just going to grab, let's see. There's lots of pretty patterns in here. But I'm going to grab... Mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna do this one. This one's pretty. All right, so it has like a little perforated edge, which is nice. So I can just cut it at the edge here. Okay. And then I'm gonna go here. And on this one, uh, I'm gonna cut these down to three by three. The inside of this box is three by three. So for this, this way that I'm gonna do it, you can cut this, I'm sorry, three by six, and you should be fine. So three is the edge right here on my paper trimmer. It's this black line. So I'm just gonna go, actually I'm gonna go six first, sorry. I'm going a little backwards. I'm gonna cut the long end first. So I'm going to go to the six, which is there, and then cut this down. 
And then from here, this way, I'm gonna cut it down to three. Okay, so three, right there. All right, cool. So now I have this longer strip and then I am just going to fold this in half, meet the tops, kind of align it as best as I can. Like that. And then I'm thinking I'm gonna grab something to push down the edge a little bit so that way it's flat, like that, okay? Now, this is the one option for no lamination. So what I would suggest is just grabbing some tape I really like this paper because it's pretty sturdy, um, but just grab some tape. I just have some regular gift wrap tape. You can grab any kind of tape though. And I'm just going to tape up the edges. I feel like just doing towards the top will be enough. You can't really tell that I put tape down, so that's good. So I'm gonna grab another piece of tape and just do this side too, here. Okay, so now I have like a little pocket that opens, perfect. And now, let me grab my, my dollar. Now if you want to, you can label these and put one on here, you can put different numbers, but honestly, if you have a tracker on the side, you really don't need to put numbers on them if you don't want to. But look how easy that is. And then this will just fit perfectly in here. And then you can just keep making those. And that, that would, didn't take very much time to make that. Yeah, super easy, gets the job done. And if you wanted to have this show a little bit more like the money, you could cut it down a little bit, um, change the dimensions. But three by three, you should be good to fit in this um, box. Now, like I said, if you don't want to put numbers, I just printed these numbers off of Cricut. If you have Cricut and you can print numbers, or if you have like stickers, honestly, you can even just write the numbers here with a marker if you wanted to. But if you don't want to write on them because it does look pretty without them, you can see like the pattern. You could, and I would suggest this for all of the, the ways that I'm showing this, is you have a tracker like this and you can just track everything on your own on this piece of paper and I believe this one let me just see can this fit in here no it doesn't but if you cut this down a little bit it would fit in here and you could just keep it on the top um, but definitely have some kind of tracker on the side that you can keep note of like how much you're putting in to each envelope so if you if you do it this way you'd have to make a hundred of these little pockets for everything that I'm doing. Um, you make a hundred of these. But yeah, super simple, just with a little bit of tape. And, and I said really suggest using that cardstock. Now I do have other cardstock options. The like loose leaf cardstock that you can find um, at the craft stores. Like you just buy like one, one of each. This is good, like I like the quality of this for, um, other projects that I've done, but I feel like for this, especially this particular way of making these envelopes, using the thicker cardstock that comes in the pack that I showed earlier is better because this is more like a piece of paper, maybe a little bit thicker. It's not as sturdy. And since you're not using the lamination, I feel like you'll be able to get more, um, more use out of this, like more, like if you fill up a challenge, you'll be able to use these more and more. They won't get messed up because like I said, this is a sturdier cardstock material. So yeah, definitely suggest that pack of paper for this if you're not using the laminated um, type of, you're not gonna do lamination on these. That is a good option. Okay, so yeah, that is the first way, the easiest way to make these, super simple. And they look cute. I love that pattern. So pretty. All right. So the next way I'm going to show is the laminated type. Now, let me get my laminator because I actually need to turn it on and then I'll show like what type of laminator I'm using um, to make all of this stuff. So this is the laminating machine that I have. I will have it linked down in the description. I got it off of Amazon. I really like this one. I was using one from work before I 
decided if that I was going to invest in this. And the one that I used from work was like the Amazon Basics, which I feel like is a really affordable um, option. And uh, it was good. But I feel like this one is a lot better than that one that I was using. It just gets the laminating pouches hot enough that it, it really sticks really well. So yeah, really like this one. To make sure if you get a laminator, it has an option for the five mil and the three mil. I always turn mine on to five mil because it's just the highest heat. Uh, and then I'm just gonna wait for that to get to green so that way I can use it and put this. So I'm gonna put this aside just for a little bit. I'll be off to the side till it is ready to use. But for now, I'm gonna cut another piece of this cardstock. Now, this one I did three by three and you could totally do another three by three size. The only thing is if you do that, because of the laminating um, portion that needs to be there, like on the side, there has to be a border of lamination or it's gonna like split open and it's pointless at that point if it opens on the side. Um, this is larger than three by three because the inside is three by three. And in here, it's three by three. So if you want everything to not be slanted in here and just fit better, because right now, if I put this with a three by three, this is how it's gonna sit in this box, which I don't like that. So you do have to make this a little bit smaller. This one's fine because it has no lamination, so it sits perfectly in here. But with, because of the lamination, you need to make this cardstock part a little bit smaller. So this one's going to be less than three, but still six. Six is still good. So I'm going to, I think it was, oh geez, I'm really bad with members, measurements, but I believe it was, actually, let me see what this is like, so I can give you the exact measurement for this. So the exact measurement is two and 13 sixteenths, which if you don't know what that means, because I had to look it up, I just go off of, okay, so I, I know this is three quarters right here, this long line right here. So I'm just going to the next little line next to it. And that is the 13 16. I'm sorry, this is like not perfect explanation of it, but I kind of just played around um, with the sizing. I knew I needed to go less than three and I made some a little bit smaller, kind of played around with it to see what the actual size was that I needed to make these so they could fit in here, account for the lamination, but also fit a dollar bill in there. So this is the measurement that I found works pretty well. So I'm just gonna cut this down like so. And then you just do the same thing. You're just going to fold it. And then I'll just crease the bottom and push the bottom down a little bit, like so, so it's flat. You definitely want these to be flat for the lamination part of this because if they pop open, I mean, I guess it, it's not too terrible, but you know, you definitely want them to be flat. It's a little bit easier to get them on there. All right, now you can just take this and laminate it, and I'll show the laminating pouches in a little bit. Um, if you want to go a little bit extra in the steps and put like a number on it, cause you could just go this way and use your tracker and you'll be good to go. But if you want to actually put the numbers on them, then, um, get your numbers. I have these I printed from Cricut. I have a Cricut and I'm able to, and I have sticker paper and I'm able to make the numbers. Now, if you don't have sticker paper, you can just use regular paper and you can glue them down. If you like using vinyl, you can do that as well. It's just, I make a lot of stickers, so I have sticker paper on hand, so I use this. Um, you can get labels at the store and just write in the number. Honestly, you could just write in the number here too if you want to. Uh, I printed these out, which actually I kept them in white, so I don't even know if you can see that there's numbers in here but uh, I just wanted, I didn't wanna waste my ink on making all these numbers because it took a lot of sheets of this in order to make all the numbers for this project. So I just did white so I could have the outlines and have them cut out. 
So I'm gonna take one of these numbers. Let's do two. Two is easy because it's got like a flat bottom. And then I just take a ruler and I'm just gonna set this on the ruler to help me line it up. I just like kind of make sure it's straight on here using the little lines. And then I'm just gonna put this down somewhat in the middle and then just push it down. And then take this off and roll it off. Okay, so there's two. You can't really see it very well, but for me, that's fine. You can kind of see it, so that's good. Um, obviously on the other patterns, it'll be more prominent, like this one, a little bit more prominent, but I feel like you can see it, so that's all that matters. And again, if you want to use ink and make it more like, like you can stand out more, you can do that, or you could just use not uh, patterns that are, don't have a lot of white on the background, and then it'll pop like this one did. Okay, so that's gonna be the, um, the scrapbook paper version of this and then I'm gonna grab I'm gonna show how to make these first before I go into the laminating part because um, I kind of want to do them to, all together before I waste like a whole pack of or a whole sheet of laminating pouch and put it in here for just one I don't definitely don't want to do that all right so I'm gonna show how I made this one these fancy um, laminated vellum ones. All right, so I'm just gonna put this aside because I will laminate that in a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna show you the laminating pouches that I used for this. I just used three mil for here. I feel like they didn't need to be too sturdy. And three mil was pretty good, especially with this one with the cardstock. And then um, these I'm gonna have a couple of laminating pouches with it so it gets a little sturdy. I, I feel like they didn't need to be as sturdy as my envelopes since I'm going through those all the time. So with those I use five mil just to make them thicker. But these I feel like they're pretty good with just three mil, which is good because three mil is a lot cheaper <laughs> than the five mil. So I do have a regular, just the glossy three mil. I have one piece of this and then I do have a matte um, three mil. So a matte and a glossy, just so that way they turn out to just be matte looking. This one is gonna be inside out, so you won't see the glossy part at all through that one. And then you do need a piece of vellum, which I get these at Michael's because you can use a coupon. So I like that, or you can get them on Amazon. I'll have one linked down in the description. Okay, and then of course you just need the numbers. If you want to put numbers, again, you don't have to put numbers. You can just make the pouches. But I like having the numbers, so I'm going to put the numbers on the ones that I make. So this is going to be the same measurement for these. So I'm just going to start cutting. So I'm going to start with first the vellum. Okay, get my paper trimmer out again. And just do the same measurements that I did for the cardstock. So this one's gonna go right after the three quarter line. And then I'm just going to cut, okay? And then this one, I'm gonna do to three. All right, and so this is the, this is gonna be where I'm gonna put the number on it. And then I have like a little vellum. Okay, so then I have three. And then this one is too little. So this one, unfortunately, is just trash. You do have a lot of waste when you do this. That's the other fun part of it. Oh, I still need this actually. Okay, so I have the vellum piece, which I'm actually going to add the number on right now. The same way. Let me grab this number. We'll do one. Number one. Again, I'm putting it onto the ruler just to help me line it up. And I like the clear ruler because then you can see through the ruler what you're doing when you line it up. So, 
Okay, and then I'm just going to, it's hard to tell. Let me put it here. Um, so I'm putting the number down with the ruler to kind of line it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I try to get it like lined up pretty good. All right, so then I have one. All right, so that's the vellum part that you have to do to the vellum if you want to do the numbers. Next, I'm gonna take the glossy piece right here. This is the one where I'm going to cut off the top part, this, this top part right here. This is important, you have to remember to do this. So this top part I'm taking off. With the glossy one though, it's really easy to tell if you're doing this wrong, so that's good. All right, so I'm just gonna top, cut off the top so they're not attached anymore. So now I can take them apart, okay? So this is trash. Now, for this one, I'm going to cut um, this down to the same dimensions that I did that one first. So, going to that line right after three quarters. And then just cutting this off. And then just cutting this down to one. Or, sorry, to three. <laughs> three inches here. So that should fit on top of here now. They should be the same exact size. Perfect, okay? Now, one thing you have to do before you put this together is you do have to flip these inside out, okay? So instead of the glossy part being on the outside, now you can see it's matte and the glossy part is inside. The matte parts are what stick to each other in the laminator, but the glossy parts won't stick to each other. So that's what's gonna make the little pocket that we want for this. And then I'm just gonna take this vellum piece and put this right over the top of those two stacked pieces that are now inside out. And then that's what's gonna make the pocket and then have the outside be vellum. And so it's a little like frosted looking, which is nice. Okay, so I'm gonna make a couple more of these cause I actually messed up on one for myself. So I need to remake one for myself. Um, and then I'm gonna send them through, I'm gonna show you how to send them through the laminator. Okay, so I made the number that I messed up on for my box. Um, and then I also made one with um, the number off of something that you can see pop more because I realized on camera, you can't even see it. Like in person, you can, you can see the outline, but in, on camera, you can't, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to make one where you actually see it pop. So if you're worried about that, if you're doing exactly like how I'm doing it, definitely pick the paper that it's gonna like pop, pop, pop off of the most. All right, so now I have my, the ones that I want to laminate all ready to go. And I'm just gonna stick this now, the mat sheet, this is the final one. You're not cutting this one, you're just gonna stick everything onto this one. Oh, and then also I'm gonna grab something else in a bit, but let me put these in here for now. So you just open this up and then I'm going to, actually, let me get my book. This this really helps, this one, this part really helps. All right, so I actually have a book that is somewhat the height of where this part, where you have to feed the um, laminating pouches into. So I like putting a book here because it helps. Oh, actually, let me put it this way. This way. Okay. Though you're not having to hold it up the whole time, it just can be annoying. And you don't want this stuff to slip and fall out and move, so this helps. So I'm going to put these in, line these up as best as I can. It's pretty straight and hopefully keep it that way while you put it into this pouch. So I'm putting it right into the, the attached edge part. It's important to put it on there. And then this one, I'm going to put here. Okay, and then these I'm just gonna set on here, like so. Okay, so that is good to go. And then just put that on the top. And you can usually get six out of here. I know I'm only doing four, but just for this tutorial, I'm only doing four. Okay, and then you just slide this right in until it catches. And now it's going on its own. So this is why I like having the book here because then I don't have to hold it up and everything's like secure it's going through and you just let that do its thing 
Okay, so I it's running through. It does take a little bit of time, like I said, but there it is. I feel like you can see the two a little bit better. Again, in person, you can definitely see it a lot better, um, especially since when you put it through the laminator, it does do like a little outline around the numbers, which is nice. Um, it's in its own little pocket. All right, cool. So now the next thing we're gonna do, I'm not gonna turn this off yet because I'm still gonna run these through the laminator. Actually, I think I'm gonna do this the other way around. So it went in this way, and then I'm gonna just go around the back way on this, just so it's really secure. Okay, and then once it's done passing through, since you're making a lot of these, if you do this, um, all the hundred, I like to stick it underneath this book. So this is like two purposes for this book, just to flatten it out a little bit while it cools down and is ready to be cut. Because you're pro if, you do, if you do this and you use the pouches, you're gonna need at least like 17 of these pouches. You're gonna be running this these through this laminator 17 times. So you get a good stack once you're done. Um, but I am done with the laminator for now. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna turn it off up to this side. And these do cool down pretty quick. Yeah, it's really cold. Um, but yeah, that is the finished result of going through the laminator. So now we need to cut these with the paper trimmer. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna cut these apart. I probably should have spaced these out a little bit more. Definitely give yourself more space. This one has a good amount of space here, just to be on the safe side, but you know, learn from my mistakes, basically. All right, so I'm separating these, so that way I can cut them on their own. This one right down the middle. Okay, perfect. So, oh, I still need this actually. I'm gonna start with these. These are, again, these are the easiest ones to make. These right here. Um, so the cuts are just going to be. I like to start off on the top and use the top as a line, as a straight edge. I'm going to use to measure the other sides. So I'm just going to go right to the top. I'm going to cut through not necessarily the paper, but just the top pocket. You can see like right here, there's like a little bubble and you want to cut through there because we want to open it. So I'm just going to take my paper trimmer and cut through. If you get some of the paper, it's fine. But I'm going to cut through the top, see if it opens. It does open. Nice. So now I have that nice little pocket. Now, I'm gonna cut the sides. You have to be careful not to cut through that bubble now. So this is where I kind of eyeball it. So it's not gonna be exact on each one because some of them, the pockets are a little bit thicker than others. So I'm just gonna go around these and hopefully I don't open them, which looks good so far. And then the bottom, I'm just gonna cut to Here. I try to put this along the edge on where this white ends as a guide and cut that bottom part off. Okay, and then this one I'm just gonna cut. Okay, and then this one I'm just gonna cut again just to not open up that pocket, but make it like a straight, nice cut. All right, cool. So now I have this little pocket here which hopefully should fit in here. This is always my test run. So this was the three by three. All right, so yeah, it fits perfectly in here without catching on the edges, which is what I want. Now I'm gonna make sure I fit, can fit this dollar bill in here. Okay, so yeah, it fits in very nicely in here, like so. All right, so that one is good. Let me do this one next, so you can see it again. So just cutting off the top part to open up the pocket. And the pocket oh, should open. This one shouldn't have a problem since the inside's just the cardstock. Okay, and then just cutting off the edges on this one. Lining up this bottom to the white to cut off the bottom part. 
and then cutting off this side without cutting into the bubble. All right, so that is the pocket. I think I'm good. Yeah, and that fits in nicely here. Next, perfect. Okay, so those are the cardstock ones, super easy. This one, um, same cuts on this one too. On here, okay, so I'm gonna go with the top part. This one's a little bit hard to see. It's nice to have the light because I can really see it very nicely, but cutting off the top part, and then I'm going to cut off this on the side, and then this on the edge, or the bottom, and then this on the side. Let's see, a little bit here should be good, I think. Okay. And then we got, let me make sure it opens. Yep, we got a pocket. Nice, so let me make sure the dollar fits in here. Take this one out. Okay. And, boom, fits nicely in there. This side has the, the vellum on it, so it looks a little frosted. This side I didn't care to do another vellum, but you could, you could double it up and do vellum on the other side or fold it and do vellum on the other side if you want that look. For me, I only care if the front is vellum and then it saves on the material because you don't get as much from the vellum sheets. So, so yeah, that one is good. And then it does fit in here nicely without catching, so that's good. All right, so I'm just gonna cut this last one next. Kind of get in a rhythm of doing this too. <laughs> Definitely suggest doing it while you're watching something it helps the time pass by because it does take a bit of time to make these. These are super time consuming, but I think the end result is really, really pretty. Okay, so that is going to be it for this video. Now, if you're having um, sometimes, like oh, I noticed when I was making these that some of them were like different sizes. They weren't like perfectly matching up. I did end up going and making all of these three inches in height because now they're a little bit longer than three inches because of the bottom lamination. So what you can do is you can go back in and push this up into the three inch mark and then cut these down the top a little bit. If you want them all to be exact, and also you get to see the dollar a little bit more, which I like. So that's one little thing that I did for mine is I just cut, the last cut was just to make them all three inches in height, like so, okay? Um, again, you don't have to do that. It's just, I was being a little bit, I just wanted them all to be three inches. And then I like that this, like you can see the dollar a little bit more on the top which I like that. So, so yeah, that is how you make these little envelopes for the 100 envelope challenge. Three different ways to make them. Um, hopefully I was able to help you figure out these because I know these could be a little, these are so time consuming, but honestly, I think they're totally worth it if you have the time and you have the um, product to to make them. I have a ton of these since I, I make my own cash envelopes, like the laminating pouches. I invested in all of this and I really like that I'm able to make them on my own because I can make them as I need them, which is really nice. But I really love how these turned out. These turned out really cute with the numbers. So just a heads up, I plan on doing a video um, taking these Let's see my challenge. Where's my challenge? It's somewhere in here. Okay. Oh, it's here. I just took the paper out. So this is my $100 um, envelope challenge. I already misplaced my little sheet, but I'll find it. Um, I plan on taking this money that's in this envelope and putting them in here because right now it's all in here and now I need to get them into the little pocket. So I'm going to do another video showing that and I plan on doing a giveaway in that video. I'm planning on giving away these. So 
if you're interested, definitely tune in for that video. Keep an eye out for that video. It'll be coming this week or the upcoming week. And um, yeah, make sure you're subscribed. And if you want to hit those that bell for the notification so you know when I put up videos. I put up a lot of videos, so <laughs> definitely um, check it out once you see the, um, I think I might call it like cash envelope box, 100 envelope challenge stuffing or something. I don't know. It'll, it'll be on my, challenge, or, or my channel. So yeah, I will have all of the info down in the description, the details that I mentioned for these and also the products that I used, as many as I can find that I can link, I will make sure to do that. I hope this video was informative. Hopefully we were able to get some ideas on how to make these. Let me know which way is your favorite way of how these um, little envelopes were made. I definitely love the laminated ones, but I'm really loving these. I think these are super cute, especially with these patterns, these different patterns. I, thought that, I think those came out really pretty. All right, and super easy to make <laughs> compared to the left, the vellum ones. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed watching. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you in the next one.